Not a good place. Oh. Jab is really a weapon. How's it going? How's it going, everybody on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook? How's it going today? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you guys are at. We are here live at Coastal Boxing Club. My name is Eddie. I'm here live with 86 Boxing, Zeke Moore Boxing. Um, let me turn on my camera here because that is so unprofessional not having my camera on right now. <laughs> Um, we have our special guest in the building. I should say Mr. Alexander is in the building. Oh, let me bring him onto the studio real, real quick. Okay. Here we go. We have all um, Mrs. Skywalker. How you doing, guys? There he is. What's going on, Alex? How's it going, Alex? It's doing good, doing good. How are you guys? Not bad, not bad. Good, good, good. Yeah. Feeling good. How, um, how are you feeling? How's, um, how's, how, how was training camp for, for you? Uh, feeling awesome. You know, now it's the last, last day. A little bit hungry, a little bit thirsty. But it's gonna be over tomorrow morning, so I have just one night of suffering, but not really suffering because I'm not really dehydrating myself too much. Try to come and wait gradually, so feeling awesome. Nice, nice. Um, Skywalker, um, if you want, you um, go ahead and um, start it off for us. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Uh, my name is Tim. I, I run a channel called Skywalker Boxing on, on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I want to wish you good luck tomorrow on, on this uh, big fight card. I know it's not your first time fighting on a big event. I've, I've seen that you fought on the on the Pacquiao Bradley undercard. You've been on a lot of big undercards. Uh, how, how are you feeling about tomorrow, being, being that it's a big event? Oh, it's awesome, man. You know, like again, like what you just mentioned, I fought on Pacquiao Bradley too, which was my pro debut. Then later, I fight on Pacquiao, fight on Pacquiao Bradley three. So check, actually, my my I think yes, my fifth fight. Oh no, it's actually second five in T-Mobile and four times I've fought on MGM Grand Arena. We just leave it there. Super nice, you know, super cool, super excited. Nice. Um 86 boxing. Well, um, how's it going, man? Um, any question you um you want to start off with? Yeah, what's going on, Alex? Yeah, Josh here from 86 Boxing. I was telling Eddie 
I remember back in 2017 in April, Washington, D.C. at the MGM. It was a Ukrainian headline car. Vasily Lomachenko, yourself, Alexander Usyk, they, you were there. And it was a heck of a show. Uh, we know what's going on with Ukraine right now. But one of the things was at that particular time, I realized just how deep into the sport how much of a love the Ukrainian fans have for the sport of boxing because they showed out it they showed up in full force at the MGM Grand had the flags going it was a great time i met a lot of people what is that environment what was that like if you recall that and just the environment of just having your people there to support you as well oh man it was just crazy you know like first of all i was fighting in the same car with two of my buddies who mm -hmm. were together on the olympic games and then like you know, usually when you fight in the United States, the most of fans they either American or Mexicans, you know, like, but there you see like almost all the bleachers, they were covered with Ukrainian flags, people singing Ukrainian, uh, you know, anthem. It was just crazy, you know, like, but it gives me a lot of motivation. And actually, as I remember, I fought uh, UNESCO Gonzalez, pretty tough uh, Cuban fighter. Oh, yeah. And it was mm -hmm. a good fight, which, which ends up very good in my favor. All right, good stuff. Yeah, I think that was certainly great. And and as far as I know, you've been you have been out for a while, and you made your way back, getting in the mix. How was that time off? Did did it like help to heal your body? Was did it help to heal you mentally as well? What was that like having that period off? And now that you're back, jumping in the mix again with boxing. Again, I I think. That's exactly what happened because usually fighters after loss need some time to recover physically and mentally. But in my case, I won't really struggle. First of all, I never stopped training. You know, I was keep working all the time because I was considering this kind of scenario. And parallel to this, I was trying to do business. So I was kind of busy. And then again, like Canela invited me to be his part partner. And I, you know, like, I was invited, I came there, and when I started sparring him, I just realized that probably this is the right time, that I'm still capable, I still can, and why not to, to, to do it again? All right, good, good to go. Yeah, yeah, one more thing, Jets. Uh, so with that, okay, you spar Canelo and all that stuff. We've seen some of his last fights. Some people feel that Canelo is uh, on the decline, per se, but he's still at the top of his game, just thinking about it relative to everyone in the sport, just being in there sparring with them compared to, of course, you've been in with a number of other top level fighters. What was that like? What do you feel about Canelo and, and sort of and how does these, his punches feel uh, being well, that he's kind of moved up and you're a bigger I, I would, guy? I would have mentioned that, that don't don't see the, the way he looks. Yeah, he kind of short. But he definitely he definitely don't have a lack of power uh, being light heavyweight. He he knocked those those people out. You remember his fight against Sergey Kovalev? And listen, mm -hmm. Sergey Kovalev is not the ordinary fighter. Sure. He was mo most feared puncher. He's a monster. And look what what happened with Canela. So Canela very hard puncher. And I I fight uh, good punchers. I spar punchers. And he definitely. I repeat myself, has no lack of power, light heavy at all. He, th this is one of his like strengths. This is what he actually impressed you with, his power, even in light heavyweight. Okay, great. Thank you. But he definitely sharp. He definitely has some different level of defense, which makes him even more dangerous. Right, right. Um, Zeke. Yes, sir. Um, hello, Alex. How are you doing? Um, I have a quick question. Uh, when when fighting your opponent, do you study on on clips on your opponent, or do you focus more on uh uh what do you need to improve from your last fight, or uh, new strategies coming to to this fight? What do you focus um, more on? Usually, it's both. Usually, probably like a camp was split on uh, two parts. So initially, obviously, uh, right after fight. You always watching your video, your tape of your fight. You see a lot of mistakes every fight. Probably every 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 fighter does. So so first, like a first period. Obviously, it's first is a rest. Then we start like working on those mistakes which I which I made in the first fight. And then soon as like the fight announced and I know who I'm gonna fight, we 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 keep working on on mistakes all the times. But we start 
more be, being more focused on what we're supposed to do with our future opponent. This is basically how it happens usually. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Alex, uh, without trying to re relieve your game plan, um, like how much how um, film and stuff like that have you watched with um about um Isaac Rodriguez? Well, this is not much information about this fighter, but for me, the most important in YouTube, he, there's available his last fight against. Uh, I remember the name of the guy. This guy fought Badu Jack in the cruiserweight for, for the title, and it was actually a controversial. I mean, fight, whatever, because I know that after fight, Badu Jack became a world champion in the team of this guy, uh, I think, uh, contested the, 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 the decision, I think. So it's a pretty solid fighter. So Isaac Rodriguez, my opponent, run uh, distance with him. I mean, still lost that that the, the, this guy outbox him, outbox him. But I mean, it's a solid fighter, experienced, seasoned. Yes, probably this is not like a top fighter, but listen, this is a guy who you're supposed to be ready to fight against for 100. Otherwise, he's gonna kick your ass. That's all I can say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have um a fan on. Had a question for you all. Um, eighty six. Can you read that for me, if you can? Yes, sir. Yeah, filthy boxing hipster. He says, "Hi, Alex. Mm -hmm. Big fan. I have to ask, how does Adonis Stevenson's power compare to Baturbiev? Who would you call the better or stronger puncher?" Okay, I'll exp I'll, I'll explain. They are both very hard punchers, but they're different, right? So Stevenson. His punching power, it's combination of power and like sharp speed. So basically, I my my opinion, like like one punch puncher, Adonis Stevenson hits harder. If he mm -hmm. lands the punch, he's probably gonna knock you out, which which uh, merely happened in our fight in round number ten. And I was I think I was hurt a couple times in the fight. Maybe didn't even did, didn't show it. But better be if his power coming from, 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 from his actually from his strength, from his power. So if to compare like a Stevenson, if he hits you, it's like somebody shooting in your head from the sniper rifle. And the better be is like locomotive running on you. So better be is punches, they heavier because they have so much weight and power in them. But they're not as, as accelerated as, as Stevenson has. So basically, I think like one punch, you can stand better beef punch. But on the other hand, better beef throws a lot of punches. Stevenson, probably being not the youngest fighter I fought, he threw, he always looking for the opportunity to throw his, 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 his you know, sniper punch. And then in case he lands, he knocks you out. Better be if he, besides <laughs> being very strong, he's a volume puncher. He throws a lot of punches. He just coming, coming, throwing them. Yeah, you can probably can stand one punch, but they're accumulating. He just throwing three, five. He keep throwing, which is makes him even stronger, stronger guy. But as a puncher, as a one puncher, I would pick Adonis Stevenson. I wanted to bring something up. We just had Anthony Yard uh, a fight last weekend, and he had an amazing performance. And that's coming after a loss from from uh, Arthur Betterbeef. Do you feel that? Since you've been in the ring, I know Better Beef has less experience than you. I believe he has 14 fights, and I believe you have 19. Listen, but uh, do, you, do you feel that being in the ring with that level of competition, uh, do you feel like you, you've learned something from it and, and you, you're stronger and better now? Man, we were learning after every fight, and especially even, even sparring. Right. And especially when you're fighting. When you're losing, we're learning. We learn a lot. You know, like when you win the guy easily, you think, ah, whatever, I'm tough. This is what, what meant to happen. But when you lose, you start realizing that something was wrong. Of course, mm -hmm. you're learning a lot. I think we're learning from our losses even more than the, from our wins, obviously. This is just right. a human nature. Yeah. So yes, yes, that's what I feel. I learned a lot. And I hope the the nail version two going to be better <laughs> than the nail version one. Nice. And we see it. We see it all the time. We just seen Anthony Yard, and then Callum Smith is another one that's going to be fighting Better Beef soon. That 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 uh, after after Canelo, he's been doing great, bro. Uh, Callum Smith, and 
Yeah. And you see it a lot, man. You see these fighters elevate their game, and, and uh, they're, they're tougher, man. You know, and they're in there with the tough tough guys. They come out tougher, man. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be an interesting fight, by the way. You know, like uh, better get, better be if not getting any younger. And it looks like the Callum Smith now on his pick. So it's going to be an interesting fight. I still, I still, uh, I still got better beef, but you know, there's some intrigue in this fight. All right, right. Same, um, same for Anthony Yard. I think he's getting better from fight to fight, just improving and improving, and he's gonna be real threat in line. Not, not will be. He's already like a real threat for any line heavyweight. Um. So I have a question, like how how are you feeling um like uh mentally right now, like coming up to this fight card? Because um since he, like you said, you know, this is a big fight card, you know. Um, you know, it's a Charlo Canelo big fight card, you know. Being on that type of undercard, how are how how are you feeling? Oh well, mentally, I think it gives you more motivation. And listen, man, I've been in those kind of yeah. situations. So I, I first uh, uh don't don't forget I'm I'm I was in Olympic Games. There's also probably like, the big crowds, probably even bigger. And listen, yeah. I was in this kind of show, including five my fights in Stevenson Better Be when 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 my fight was the main feature and now I just fight in undercards. So so it's completely normal. I think it's even better when you feel more motivated, when you hear the crowd. So that's just perfect. Only plus definitely can't wait to see you um come Saturday night, man. I know it's gonna be fireworks on. Uh fireworks and everything um i'm not really leaning towards isaac too much i don't really have isaac having a much of a chance to be honest with you <laughs> but, listen, uh, as we mentioned but, before listen I, i'm not trying to make him bigger than he is right but this is a guy as i told you you're supposed to be focused you're supposed to be ready if you're gonna underestimate this kind of guy you're gonna get in trouble. That's what I think. Yes, if you're gonna be ready, it's supposed to be not a problem. But it's a boxing and everything can happen. Right, exactly. Um not not trying to make you overlook this fight, but is there anyone in mind who you would like to fight after this fight? If you do become become victorious? Uh again, now my focus hundred percent. On Rodriguez, but I open not open and not willing. I want to fight the best. I want to fight Bevel, better be if, if not them yet. Which mentioned Yardy, uh, Callum Smith, Aziz. Who else there? I mean, all those guys, yeah. I'm ready for all of them. They're all tough fighters, but this is those challenges, challenges which I want to have. 86 anything else you want to say there's a question. you know that that kind of was one of the questions that i had that kind of piggybacked off of what you were mentioning there eddie and what filthy boxing hipster was mentioning as well here in the question kind of your pursuit i'd imagine you you've had some time off you you had a lot of time to think about this comeback and sort of do you have a timeline as far as how long do you plan to continue to box? And I know you, in all likelihood, you said you want to fight uh, Arthur. You want to fight the other guys who, uh, like Bevo, those types who are champions. So do you have a timeline for yourself? Because you started your career on the fast track, much like a lot of the Ukrainian fighters. You just come in, you start taking on tough competition right off the jump. So is, is that the type of approach you're trying to take here with this second stint or just kind of ease your way into it once you feel like you're ready to just step in there with the top names? Yeah, listen, I just gonna play by ear. I'm not feel I'm wasted at all. I'm not feel that my mm -hmm. body has any troubles, you know, like because the, 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 your age is just a number and how much time you have, it really, really depends on your health, on your genetics. You know, and basically the, the age is just a number, you know, like if you feel great, if you can compete, you can do it. Like, look at the look, 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 look what Bernard Hopkins did. He right. was in, and f being 50 years old guy on the very top level. So I'm just okay. six. So I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, like uh, setting up limits for myself. Like I say, OK, 40, OK, 38. I'm just going as I'm going. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to get lazy or going to get 
fed up with all this shit and they're gonna say, okay, that's enough. Maybe it's gonna happen. Who knows? It's a boxing, you know, and actually every fight you can be potentially injured, something can happen. So for now, I'm feeling good, feeling great, uh, feeling hungry again, feeling motivated again, and one of the big challenges. And again, if not, like best challenges we can find. Right, definitely. But no, you definitely do deserve the big challenges and everything like that. Um, you're you're another one of um, you're another or uh, um, Ukrainian friend and pride, man. You're. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone looks up to you guys right now. Yes, sir. Um, Skywalker, any last um words you want to say before we we go? Uh, I wish you I wish you a lot of luck, brother, man. I, I'm rooting for you heavy. Uh, me and Josh up here, we're both uh, combat veterans, man. And we, we're always praying for Ukraine. Uh, you know, prayers out to the people of Ukraine. Uh, you know, so Thank go in you. there and go in there and kick some ass, brother. So we're rooting for you. Thank you, guys, and glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraine, yes, sir. <laughs> Slava Ukraine. <laughs> um, Thanks, Alex. Alex, um, then again, like, thank you so much for um, having, um, having, um, having you on and everything. Um, thank you for having the time. I know this is kind of, we kind of got um, connected on short notice, but I definitely do appreciate the time that you did. Oh, have okay. You're awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, patience to catch me because we were supposed to do it yesterday and then it was too much stuff. Press conference, yeah. some stuff, yeah. super, so I finally <laughs> probably get tired of waiting for you. <laughs> no problem, no problem, man. Um, like I said, um, I wish you the best of luck this this weekend, Saturday night. Um, kick some ass, man. I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, be watching here at home. I wish I would be able to make it. Um, like I said, uh, Alex just don't know what he got himself into. <laughs> good. Good guy. Okay, take care. Thank you. Get that, get that knockout. Have a good one. Bye bye. Hey, that was a good interview, Eddie.